No, it's on, I think. But then I, yeah, I no, can't. No, it's on. But that's kind of, yeah, that's the thing. So if I'm talking to somebody, everybody hears, but maybe that's nice. Let's try it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have the phone number so we can get back to it. All right. Very I'm back. Yeah, that's good. that would be good. And at least in the room, they can't ever all well, over here. So I got this question about our studio. Is, is our studio different from R? Um, and, and that question also applies to Python. You guys are like, well, is PyWin different from Idle and from how, do you, how are these different R's different <coughs> or, or not? They're all the same. Every, R is just R. Our studio is just a program that around, build around general R that helps you um, use it. You can. Um, just like um, you know, Bear was showing yesterday for uh, Python, you could, or well, he showed actually for R. You can also run R from a command line, and now this is R. And you can say you know three plus three. Um, other people will run by um, making a script and then doing something like R command batch um, script dot R. So you buy the script file, you run that, um, which I didn't have yet, but I could make one. Let's, let's just make one. Uh, let's go to um, some high directory. So it's up here. Make a um, test.r. Um, X is two, print, or let's do that probably, X plus five. Okay, that's my test.r, test.r. Eh, doesn't show anything, let's see. I don't know how you do that, how do you, it probably never shows it to a console, uh, it's run. Um, anyone? How do you get it to show something? We have got another test.r file there. Is that the right test.r? Is it in the right directory? Or is it or head? Let's, let's try that. Type. Type. Type is the one for DOS, yeah. So it's, um, I guess it doesn't, you just have to write it, or do you do, you do this? Yeah, yeah, output dot text or so. That's what it does, yeah. So now you could do a type. Uh, 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 that's what it is, yeah. Um, oh. Oh, it just doesn't. No, there it is. Didn't do anything. What well, made the file I wanted? Okay, there it is. Okay, so now, so so you can run command line and it will create something like this. But that's, you know, that that seems stupid, but it's actually really handy if you have, for example, a script that you want to run um, frequently and and that you you could automate, make this run every every morning at six o'clock or so, download some data, do some analysis, produce something, update your website. Um, these things are very so so being able to have to sort of this command line uh, access uh, actually is very handy. You don't have to start up a program and then press a button or so. Now, now it can all be automated, even even on Windows. Um, and as you see, um, what Barry was talking about, yeah, I, um, I have a lot of these these um, Unix tools installed on Windows, so you you can do uh, very similar things as he was showing yesterday. So our studio, same thing. It's just easier, particularly if you're if, if you're starting. It's, it's certainly a nice, easy environment. I don't like it so much because of the the, the plotting is is kind of constrained to this small window, and it, that always bothers me. Um, but I, I actually do suggest it for if you're a beginner, and I use it in courses. So it's a pretty nice product. But it's all the same R. That's behind it. 
So it's um, what do we call this? Uh, oh, well, whatever. Our, uh, how do you call these things? Uh, hmm? Like like R Studio, like rapid application development, IDEs, integrated development environment. Yeah. Um, Kodomo, this Komodo is another strong one, and then if you're really out there, there's uh, Eclipse. Uh, so there's other things like R Studio that you that you might use. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just don't. I just, writing in Notepad plus plus just works for me. I, I, I guess uh, I can search and replace and things like that. I'm um, in for other programming languages. It, it, it yeah, you know, it doesn't provide much support. Like some you know, like some other program languages, you would click on a function and it would then you you automatically jump to where the function was defined, things like that. But none of that support exists for R. So that so the IDEs for R don't really provide that much additional things that you don't already have. But with other languages, you can actually get much more out of it because it, it, it knows much more about the language because it's it, yeah because the structure of the language is easier to implement that way, I think. But is that true? Do you, do you use any? Sort of IDE type things with, with R. Because I've used them with other with Java. I would do that, but with R. My editor is syntax highlights. Yeah, that, well, that I have. Yeah, but that's but that's very minimal in terms of like there's no relationships. Like oh, here's this function, or um, maybe that's just not. That, yeah. <laughs> syntax highlighting. Um, you want to have you know be able to open multiple tabs. So this is what Notepad plus plus does. The multiple tabs. Search across tabs, automatic, you know, search and replace over open files, closed files. That's basically what I, what I mo need most. And in our studio, when, when you see class, the entire thing crosses, so you cannot just save the... Yeah, and the, the, so our studio has some, has some, has some little problems as well, yeah, and, and, um, like the zooming I did yesterday doesn't work in our studio, so so there's there's actually a couple of things in the roster package I, I sort of need to adjust for our studio because there's so many our studio users and so it, and it's very new still uh, you know it's only been there for two years or so. And it checks uh, over strictly that the is restricted. So, what, what is the. So, if you type the word simple and if you type ACT, or if you type, if you type ACT, or whatever. So, the opposite. Parse is long read. Okay, so it needs to have plus WGS. But if you, if you type um, uh, W, it's the other way comparing it with um, uh, the word simple. Essentially, essentially. Word simple? Yeah, okay. So that's what this have, so has. So, you, so what you really want to do is. If you use the same projection, you say, you say uh, small CRS and then world simple and then you assign the same thing. Mm. So let's change it. So let's change it here. Let's make it small CRS. Yeah. Ah, small, all right. Yeah. Yeah. And then okay. World simple. 
with after the no, just like in in there, in the in the just, yeah in the parentheses yeah. We take the zero as a for example underscore. What is happening here exactly? Is this is this well? This was related to the. <laughs> we'll see that. Well, that's fine. That's, that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's good. So here we're assigning. We're saying the prediction of A to B is this. And I did what I said. It was last long. But then, but then over. It's picky because it's not, even though it, it actually says that long that long, it doesn't. It, it, it compares it text-wise, not conceptually. So it's somewhat different. It's, it's different. I can do it. So, but by saying now we're saying it is exactly the same thing for bad reason, so then it can't go wrong. Okay.
code. Um, you're loading in um, our first species data from this uh, code. Uh, first one you're loading in, and then in, um, vegetation and plant as well. So you're using two different species. No. No? Oh, I do here. Ready yeah, push. Yeah, okay, right. I have the I have the sloth. Ready push. Yeah, that's the sloth. Yeah, mm -hmm. like in lazy air. Yes. Yeah. Stuff? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then um, another one here. I'm that's slow. A plant. Not that's a plant. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm wondering, are they related? So are you saying? No, no. So no. later, I didn't check later, and so it's just. Um, I'd forgotten that a sloth was in there, but but. Um, yeah, there's two, there's two examples. Okay, I thought it's something they, like they, they, the sloth depends on the No, because, and actually, because one is from the high Andes, and the one's from the lowland uh, tropical rainforest, so they're, oh, okay. they're even okay. geographically okay. entirely okay. different. I should have looked that up. <laughs> okay. I'm sure it would eat it, but oh, it would eat something. It wouldn't okay. eat it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, it starts here, library dismo. There's no package called dismo. Okay, do you understand that message? Okay, so, library dismo, there's no package called dismo. So, it means that you have to install it. So, that means that you're trying to load the package, but you don't have it. So, you first need to install it, and you can do you can either just type install.packages dismo or you can go to the menu. No, 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 like go back to uh, R Studio where you were. And so you want to, what you can do is, uh, well, let's just type it. So if you can make, 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 make a new line. Yeah, sure, I understand. I'm making make a new line anywhere. So, uh, well, we can type a second here. Yeah. You type install and then dot. No, no space. Packages. And then parentheses. Parentheses. Uh, no, that's our quotes. Parentheses are the. Um, no, hold on. Brackets, brackets would be these. Yeah. Yes, parentheses, brackets, and, and squirrely. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, but then you have okay, brackets and square brackets, I suppose. And then, and then quote. Yes, yeah. Uh -huh. And then uh, Dismo, D I S M O. Yeah, and then enter. That's, oh, you don't have internet. Oh, you do have internet. Okay, let's try again. Maybe you have to re renew it. Can you try? Try to, is it to actually uh, some access? Just to make sure. If you click on the link, click on the link. I uh, see. Yeah, you have to redo it. Yeah. And then you re Okay, let's. But do you know anything similar to, for example, if you know the name of the file and you want to do a the file? Yeah, well, you, well there's list, list of files. You can do a lot. But this list of files is there in your current Well, you, you, can, you, can do, um, you can use you can use C or D or whatever, and then you can say, uh, 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 what's, the, what's the word? Uh, recursive is true, so it will go to all the folders. Okay. And then you can get a search term, and then get all everything that matches. Okay. The full names. Yeah, because the full is true. Full names is true. Yeah. So this file is quite powerful, so this is quite useful. Okay, let's go here again. Oh, I think we have it. Uh, let's try again. Just do it.
Okay. Click on use next. Okay. Okay, so that works. Um, if I have to go back to, can you go to the normal R just for the, the normal R? Yeah. The, the simple R. Yeah, that's the and that's how it's gonna copy and paste from the the other the R studio. That that I know. To Norway. So we go from there. Okay. It's not really working. Yeah, here it comes. And you may you may see this more often because. Resolution here is 100, but and cell is not a good resolution because the number of cells. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what the default thing is. Okay, so R <coughs> should have dimensions of 10 rows, 10 columns, 10 100 cells. Okay. Right? But it then gives a set. So the, the resolution is just the size of the cell. The size of the cell. And so you can go from 0.5 to 100, you have 360, 10 cells, 10 columns in there. Well, the unit, yes, but it, it has to be pumped in the chronographic system. Yeah. So you're doing it on that day, it's eight degrees. So it's just going to be there. Yeah. But otherwise, it's going to be there. It's going to be anything, though. It could be feet, it could be anything. Yeah. Depending on the chronographic system. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'd like to talk a bit about uh, the projections. I've been getting some questions about it already, and it was on here as well. Um, and actually, this morning, walking up with Ed, sir, we were talking about that too, is that that's just a thing that, that leads to a lot of confusion. Um, I think Roger said yesterday, well, you're all somewhat familiar with it, or at least you're aware of it, but I guess that's also already indicated, like, well, it's probably not quite to the extent that that might be desirable. So let's, let's, let's have a look at... Um, this, I have this object, W, and because raster is, is loaded, it, it will display this way. But I have this, ob uh, this object as a spatial polygons data frame. So it's polygons, it has a data frame, and you can see some, some, some um, uh, attributes, variables associated with it. It says coordinate reference system NA. Right, and we could, and we could also get it out with this function, push for, push for string. Actually, a couple of functions you can use, but it's, uh, let's do use that one. NA, so that, that's one typical situation that um, we don't know what it is. Uh, actually, it's, it's unfortunately typical, and, and then, uh, then you're kind of stuck if you want to do transform it. We'll talk about you know, transformation. So very often you have to guess it. Um, and Roger was talking about that yesterday, like, well, it's probably this and that because it's in Brazil, and you can often guess. If you know, the first thing to look at, look at these numbers: minus 79, 179, minus 89, 89. So clearly, it's within the minus 180, 180, minus 90, 90 box. Almost guaranteed is latitude longitude. It doesn't have to be, but you know it is. 
you know, 999 out of 1,000 times it is. So we can let's at least guess that's what it is. So often you start with guessing. If, if you see large numbers, however, it's probably something else. My first guess, if it's a small area, UTM. If it's a whole continent, well, then it kind of depends. You, then you, then you kind of have to have some, some knowledge. If it's North America, you know, it's probably Albers. And, well, anyway, there's, there's ways to guess that. So if it's unknown, you cannot change it. So let's, let's say, well, let's say we, we wanted to change this into uh, some other projection. Let's say any, this, this is, uh, we can plot it. Um, projection is unknown, but, but there are coordinates, so it can be plotted. Right? We don't know what these, and we can do, um, actually, access equals true. Access is true. There we go. So it has coordinates. We just don't really know, and it goes to minus 200 beyond that. We just don't know what they refer to, at least not formally. We have a pretty good idea what it is. And so it's a world map, which again, you know, now we're pretty sure what it refers to really. But, but let's say we wanted to have um, project uh, this map to some other projection which is appropriate for the whole globe. So I have two questions. Well, why would you want to do that? And the second, first, and the second question is, well, which one would you use? So first, why, why would you want to project it? So why would you not just use... So I want to make, say, a map of... Um, you know, the quality of the soccer team for each country, right? For different colors, Brazil will be yellow, and Nigeria will be green, and you can figure out what that, what that means, but um, there's no legend. Um, so you could just color this map. Um, would that be okay? And, and why not? There's a lot of distortion in the map. If you, if you use this map and you publish it, then we all know that you don't, you're not a geographer, or at least not a competent one, or at least not a competent cartographer. This is a bad world map. It's, it's too much distortion, and there's, there's just better alternatives. It's simple. Uh, you know, um, it's, it's really not that great. You, you, won't see any, you won't see maps like this in National Geographic, at least not in the center folds, kind of big maps. Maybe, maybe they sometimes do. Um, So what is a better, what's an alternative? What's our, what are alternative map projections we could use? I guess it's, it depends on what you, you prefer on sewing. Yeah. Like whether you prefer having the equal area or then restore the shape. Yeah. And so what, what, when, might, when would you prefer equal area generally and when might you prefer shapes to be important? Or, or you know, it, it depends on use as well, but generally what, 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 what could guide that decision? Yeah, I would say that, that that equal area is particularly important for analysis, and you were you're, that's sort of what you were alluding to. If you if you if you want to make sure that you know one pixel, one cell, one grid cell really is the same size everywhere, because otherwise you might get a lot of grids in the north that are actually much smaller, just because they I mean really you know area is much smaller there than than, than it's suggested, and and so you get to say oh there's all all of whatever it is you're you're you know. Zooplankton, all the zooplankton in this in the Barents Sea, whereas yeah, well, but the Barents Sea is really much smaller than than the Central Atlantic. It's just it's just distorted. So so that's 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 an issue with with and and, and certainly if you want to analyze the data, it's really important to have equal area grid cells. Um, and there are some equal area projections, but they tend to look ugly. So I, I, we can show I can show you one. Um, you get a lot of distortion. So for mapping. If the purpose is mapping, you, you probably want to have some balance where there's, you know, shape is not too much distorted and areas are also not as much distorted as, as, as here. So any, anyone can, has a, knows about names of projections that could be used for this at the global level? I just used Eckert 4. Okay, Eckert 4, right? Yeah, that's one. Mollweide is one. The National Geographic uses, yeah, apparently a standard, that I come back to. Robinson, another one. Sinusoidal. 
There's a couple. Let's take Molloway. So a lot of these, lot of these projections are named after their inventor. Um, and so, um, well, what we need to do then is, is use uh, a function that can transform data from one universe to the next one. And the function for that is um, you do library rgdal and then sp transform. Now let's look at that help transform. No, transform. Let's take that one. All right, so that's X, an object to be transformed, a spatial object, and the CRS object, object of class CRS, um, SP transform for map projection and datum transformation. Well, it's there's not here, but it, you know, it's, 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 it's a bit sparse. But what it wants is our original object and then a description of we want it, what we want it to be. Um, no example. So it's a bit hard, but you know. So you you could of course then say, well, what I would do then is like, okay, let's just see if anyone has given me an SP transform example um, help Lang long lateral UTM. That's that seems interesting. Um, well, at least I you know this this seems like a reasonable example. Um, an object and then CRS, some description of what you want it to be. Now the question is, okay, so I, I can copy that um, and I'll do that. But of course we had W and we don't want Mercator, we want Molweide. So something like this. And it says, well, Basically, the, the problem is here. This is not the correct, you know, price equal mole y is an unknown ID. So, so things are difficult. You have to figure out how to describe this. Yes? Um, yeah, in uh, like ArcGIS, it gives you the nice list of what the projections are. Yeah. So you, I, I know what my projection is, but how do I find out what the code is? Yeah. Um, well, and, and so there's different ways. Um, again, you can just, you know, Plug it into Google and, and um, so, but, but there's actually a very nice website for that. But so let's first try to see if, if you just did mole wide uh, prosh4, because this is the prosh4 notation. Oh, well, actually, if you get just to the website that, that you know, the, that I was going to go to, um, spatialreference.org. So let's just go there um, like this, and you go to the search and you say, okay, I know the name. And you know, you might have found it in different ways. You search. And then, well, there's actually variations on it. Um, world Molloy, uh, WDS, so that's just the world. And then the interesting thing here is you have um, how S3 would describe it, JSON notation, PROSH4, that's the one we want. Click on that, ah, PROSH equals MOL. And then some other parameters which you probably don't need, I think these are all defaults. And then datum is WGS84, so let's, I'm going to keep that one. Uh, but let's just copy the whole thing over. Take that out. Um, oh. Yeah. That's probably that. All right, that looks good. Now put this, um, I'll make this um, a variable. Um, CR, and go back to the SP transform. Catch it into a new variable X. Ah, next problem. Okay, so let's, let's but we had some success. We were able to create this CRS object that tests if it's a if it's a valid string, and it was valid in the complaint about it, and it has some interesting things. So it has a name. Prosh is mall, so this abbreviation, and often yeah, it will be UTM or something like that. So yeah, often, often three, four letters, so it's, it can be hard to recognize at first, but you get used to it. Then it has some parameters, so most projections will have parameters. So like say if you have UTM, you have to say which zone it is. UTM is often used for local maps, but there's six degree wide UTM zones starting at zero, ending in 
60. Um, some offsets, x0, y0, where do you want to center the world? So you know, the United States, they often like to center the world on the United States, surprisingly. Um, and then, you know, have the other um, uh, um, well, have the world wrapped around a bit relative to the map we were looking at. Um, and then a datum, and what's, what's actually also important is units. Units equals meters. So I got this question just now about the resolution of grid cells. It says resolution is 10. Well, 10 what? Well, it depends on your, on your coordinate reference system. It's another reason why it's important, because otherwise you say, well, my grids are 1,000 by 1,000, but meters, feet, kilometers, degrees, who knows? Degrees will be unlikely, I suppose. Okay, so we have, we're successful with that, but now we have this problem. We cannot transfer this, this error. So why, why is this? Well, this is a pretty good message. I cannot transform from an NA. So if I don't know what the universe is that this, these data are in, I cannot transform it to another universe. Right? These are mathematical transformations. So if, it's, if it's degrees, I know how to bring it to a mole wide, or if it's, if it's mole wide, I can bring it to UTM. But if I don't know it, there, there's no transformation possible. So that was this problem with W, where, where um, um, the Proch 4 string of W was NA. Now, this is important. What happens so often that people say, well, you know, uh, it is let long, it's not referred to you, but I want it to be mole wide, so let's just do this. Uh, so we had this mole wide thing, is a CR. So CR, W. Oh, great. Now it is actually the mole wide projection. Why is this? You assign the wrong numbers. Yeah. You assign the lat long numbers to the mole wide projection. This is one of the most, to me, a very amazing mistake because it's, it's you know, I, 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 I teach some of this and then I will tell my class, you know, and whether it's ArcGIS or R, you can do the same thing. You can say, well, I want it to be this, so I just assign it, and it, then it's done. Um, and I, I talk about that length, and then I go to the lab, and people still make the same mistake, and then I explain the lab, and I do it again. So it's, you know, it's, apparently, I cannot explain things very well. But, but the way I, I tend to explain is, say, well, if you have a, a bicycle and you rather have a car, you can, of course, you know, take a post-it and write car on it and stick it to your bicycle. And then, you know... <laughs> Well, you still have to say room, room yourself because it won't be a car. You know, you, just by giving something a name, it doesn't actually change. Although, well, you, you could debate that at some philosophical level, I suppose. You know, that you might argue that's actually not always true. There's, but, but, but so what you want to say, like you want to write up like on your post-it bicycle and then you put it in the machine that melts it and then out of the machine comes, you know, you, and you type in, you know, make car and out of the machine comes a car. So what we need to do here first is, is say, well, what is it? So this is a lat long, and I'll just uh, cheat a bit here. Um, this, is how I, uh, this is how lat long is um, defined. Okay, so I'll do this. Ah, doesn't like that either. A couple of things happen. Oh, actually it worked, see this? Oh, it does do that. It just warned. So because it, there was a projection, it now gives this warning. It says, uh, if, if, you really, if you think you're reprojecting, use SP transform. What's the difference? Well, right now we're just assigning. We're just putting our post in on it. We're just saying, this is what it is. Because it was NA and I assigned something, it didn't give a warning because there was nothing. And... So as for things, well, if there's, if there's NA and you, and you assign something, you probably know what you're doing. Now there was a CRS and you, you change it, so he's thinking, well, you're probably, you're probably not sure what you're doing. It's possible, so at least I give you a warning. In this case, we actually knew what we were doing and so it's fine, uh, but you get this warning. So well, if you, um, and, and now we have, we have correctly assigned it and now let's, let's see if we can um, go back here where we say transform W to CR, which is our mole wide. Well, something's happening. Plot X. Hey, nice. Um, and let's do a ledge. Uh, what's it? Access is true. I could. Um, very quickly, if I take um, E is extent roster, see if I can explain this a little bit better. Um, 
P is S E spatial polygons. And now I do the same trick. I just want to show the bounding box if, if I can do that. Um, PM. Oh, same problem. Um, there's a little aside here, so let's just go through this quickly. Let's leave pot PM. Access is true, color is light blue. And now plot the thing we had uh, is true. Oh, that didn't work as expected. Okay, I, I was trying to, never mind, I was trying to give a blue background for the whole um, world, but somehow. What's that? Yeah, well, that's a, um, but but it somehow just create this line. I'm not sure. I, well, I do think I know why. Let's let, well, let, okay. Let's meet, let, let's do this one more time. So we have e, e is e minus point. Let's make it a little bit smaller, and now it will probably work. So now I transform this extent to a spatial polygon. I assign the lat long. I transform that to. Um, Moloida, I plot it. No, somehow uh, I need to think about what's going on there. So never mind. Um, sometimes things don't work if you show them. So plot, plot. Where's my plot here? What's hard to see here is that so the moloida sort of is this is this. Um, Ellipse-shaped thing um, you see Antarctica going around. So this this is a this is a pretty nice one. This is a reasonable global map, reasonable shapes, reasonable size. The people from New Zealand hate it. <laughs> New Zealand becomes this. Anyone from New Zealand here? Any Kiwis? Um, but it's pretty good. Um, so what about UTM? Could we do UTM? Uh, you can, you can Let's try it anyway. He said, he said we can't do it, so I'm going to ch CRS, I think I know what it is, so it's something like proj is UTM, comma, uh, plus zone is, well, let's just take a zone. One more. Well, it worked. Let's see. Ah, again. Oh, I, is there something because of this? No. Hmm, 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 hmm. Well, you could, it, 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 I would expect it to work, but give a lot of distortion. So it, it would be okay in this, around this small zone and then highly distorted um, further away. But I'm not sure why... Um, This is happening. Um, maybe if I um, take a smaller subset, I think it happens because of, of some at the extremes that it gets a problem with the transformation, like the very south of Antarctica or so. Um, so if let's see if I can do a um, uh, crop W with E. Call it V, plot V. Okay, got this smaller area. Let's see if I can do the transformation then. That one again. Okay, it, it complains a bit, but it seems it did it. Ah! I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, well, never mind that. Um, I've, in the past, I would just give these strange deformed uh, maps. So, bottom line, you have to know what, what, your, transfer, what, your, what your projection is. You, ha you have to know the right one, assign that. Then you have to figure out what you want to project it to, do SP transform. Um, picking the right one isn't always easy, but it's quite a bit of help online. All right, any questions? A lot of, lot of, a lot of time spent on this particular thing, but, it, but, it, but again, this, this creates a lot of 
um, trauma. Um, typical question in RSIG Geo is, I have these two data sets. Uh, I do plots and I do points and I don't see them. And I showed it yesterday as well. Well, because you know, one is in one universe and what the other one is the other universe. In some really bad cases, actually, you do see them because they have similar numbers, but, but they're not quite the same, so you see them in the wrong spot. Oh, and you know, one more thing. So because I, I am, um, what was the model why they called again? Um, X. So X is now in meters, and so that's why these numbers are so large. So you have a zero, zero at, at the equator, zero, where also that long was zero, zero, because you didn't have any offset. And any point is now in meters away from that. So it's, which is practical. If you, um, if you plot here, and, and you, uh, then you, you could now do something like um, uh, click. This is a raster function. So where are we out here? So we're about... Um, According to this, that's not enough. That's not, oh, it can't be meters, can it be? Oh, here, yeah, it can be, yeah, sure. So it's about, no, that's odd. Okay, 7,000 kilometers north of the equator. Seems little, no? Not enough. And 5,000, and what is it? Uh, 50, that can't be right. Is that meters? 7,000, oh, is that correct? Well, so it's... 40, 20, but we aren't, we're more than halfway. What, what? A bit surprised here. I would think that we should be more than 7,000 kilometers north of the equator here. Well, is it? No, it's 10,000 to the North Pole, so that's probably reasonable. Yeah, so we're 7,000 kilometers north of the equator. And about uh, 500 kilometers. Um, East of London, reasonable, right? So these are meters. So divide by one thousand, um, you get you get uh, kilometers. So it's planar. Now it's, this is not the perfect system to do these computations, right? Because there is distortion, but it's a reasonable estimate. It's really easy, it works perfectly. You then load in the new file set with the projection quantum gives into R and then keep on working because you can waste days trying to figure out the projection. But if you work it with modus data, especially, there is no way in R to project modus data. You need a real fancy code which is available on the internet uh, written by a guy, um, a function to project and to, to load it modus from There, there's the modus reprojection tool, uh, and there is an R package that, that uses that. Yeah. So the modus, but that, that should be pretty quick because it really uses the same. Yeah, I've tried it to use yeah, this okay. tool, and there was some struggle as well. Okay. The website is uh, shut down um, Wednesday evening sometimes, so, and then it's closed for the whole night. So if you're starting at a wrong time, you really get yeah. stuck yeah. with this tool. So, I mean, sometimes it really works. Yeah, point well taken. I, w I would say, I mean, I think, uh, you know, my, I'm more positive about it, but it, it varies. I mean, some, sometimes, you know, well, you know, you, if you just get a shape file and it, is, it, is, it has a CRS and you want to project it to something standard, 
it will typically work. Now, MODIS is, is interesting because NASA came up with its own projection, you know, their own sinusoidal variant, and it doesn't, is not supported generally. So it, 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 that's a, it, it's, it's a much more difficult problem than some other case, some other cases. So, so it's, it's always context specific, but, but yeah, I can, I can see that, that there are certainly cases where you want to just go to a different tool. Yeah. Particularly if it's just, you know, data preparation anyway. Yeah. I think that's related to what you mentioned yesterday about um, big rasters in different blocks and how can you some sort of proceed them better and faster using multiple cores. Yeah. yeah. Well, so in raster, um, there is, a, there is a different function called, so SP transform will do raster. So you can, uh, uh, there's project raster. Um, and here's an example. Um, let's just look at that. Oh. So basically, uh, create a raster just from scratch. Uh, I want to go to Lambert Koenig Hall with these parameters, and they do project roster, so PR1. So let's see, the original was uh, uh, R. So this is, you know, some silly, simple roster, and PR1. Now it's difficult, because it's part of this Koenig Hall projection. Um, yeah, this, of course, FOSCO is a small data set. Um, in principle, in, in R, you can now do so. If you wanted to, to cluster, you should just say begin cluster. It takes a little while, it has to start up. It tells you how many cores it finds. Well, on this nice little machine, I have two, meaning that there's really no point in doing uh, clustering. You, know, you really need at least four, but really 12 or so to make it interesting. Um, but now you can do the same thing. And now it, it did it again with, with these. Um, Clusters and you, using the cluster, you could do, you could find out how long it took, put the system time thing around it, um, and cluster. So this is automatic. So I just start up a cluster and project raster, then we'll use it. Um, now we can do it again, and it was even faster without it because you know it's it's, it's so short. It's it, it's more about starting up and the access to the disk than anything else. Uh, so that will make it a little bit faster, but it really isn't the fastest anyway. Um, I wrote this function, and it's, it's one of these things where, where I'm really impressed by some other software that just goes through it way quicker, and I, I just haven't had the time to look and delve into how they actually do it relative to how I do it. I must be very inefficient. Um, even so, I, I know many ways I could make it faster, I just haven't had the time. But that's... that's um, Eventually, uh, this will happen. But yeah, no. If, if you if you want to reproject large amounts of raster data, um, like you know, Modis time series, there there's um, more efficient tools. It all depends. I mean, I nevertheless use it quite a bit because it's this. You know, it takes me me of course you know one second to write out this little line, and then I write it out, and then I go home, and I come back the next day, and it's all done. And um, Again, you know, my time is more, much more important, but, but where the trade-off is, at some point, if it, it becomes five weeks, then I can't do it anymore, probably, so. All right, projections. No, 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 but, no, no your, 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 your comment was well taken. I just wanted to give it, I mean, I could, but I, I thought it's very specific to your particular problem, so I thought it was, it's probably not as general as, you, as it sounded like, you know, never use it. No, well, but there certainly are cases. <laughs> but I might have missed it, but can you show the code that, like, import the world climate that with the R package? Okay, well, I'll, I'll do it, but yeah, I'll just take a little break, and then and when we get to the data thing. Um, so we, we've done um, one thing. Um, what do we do? Projection CRS. Nice. Done. Oh. <laughs> and then, but then I'll, the next one I'll do is the data. So, we'll, we'll, but yes. Just very, very short thing. Uh, is there any place where we can uh, we can develop or we can ma practice this thing of changing projections? A place or a resource where we can, for example, know which projections are available for our. Um, well, they're almost all available, and you can look at that at that website. Um, um, 
spatial reference, you can find out about it. You can look at um, the PROSH 4 documentation, which is very limited. Um, Wikipedia has very good pages about the major web projections, and they, 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 that's actually quite interesting what they show. Um, so if you do a mole wider, I'm sure you get Wikipedia up there. They show a couple of interesting things. So they, so they will show you, you know, how, what it looks like. They also show you this, this uh, Tissot's indicatrix. So that, that is a measure of distortion. So you should have a circle of this size if there's everywhere, if there's no distortion. And you see size is, is, is well conserved. You know, this is about the same size area. It's just, you know, you, you get here you get quite a bit of distortion. That's why, you know, New Zealand, um, you know, has that type of distortion. Um, and it will also say um, some properties, actually the formulation. Sometimes it's the, 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 the math is sometimes very simple. This one is relatively simple. Um, it says a pseudo cylindrical. I mean, it, and so there, there's there's a lot of literature about this, how this actually works, and what these what these names mean. Um, what it, what you know, projection you get, what you think about in, in many cases is you have a globe, and you have a light source, and you can put a light source in the middle, or be, or, be, or 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 behind it, and you actually project on a wall, and that's your projection. Now you can also project on a cone, and you get a conical projection, and you can project on a cylinder, and that cylinder can be tangential or it can be have, have some rotation, and you see that back in those names. So it's, you, if you study this a bit, you start to understand it, it, it much more. But there, there's, there's quite a bit of information uh, available, and, and R can do them all. Um, so that, yeah. Uh, okay, well, say it's, there's a lot of information, a bit widespread, but we can use just all the... Yeah, and, 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 and sometimes it's hard to find that, 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 that uh, Proj4 code, but with that website, it's, it's probably okay generally. Um, yeah. Otherwise, r geo will help you with that. Yeah. Is there any way or a repository where we can identify the datum with which some coordinate was taken just, for example, using the time or the place where the coordinate Well, th th there, are, there are resources. So if you it, uh, I forget, what, if you, see if you can find it, but if you say like uh, datum Zimbabwe, there is a very interesting, um, not the poverty, uh, um, Cartography. There's a very nice series, but I'm not, I always find it when I look for these things. Oh, that was. Um, well, let's let's say what datum used in Netherlands or Norway, 1930. So there is somebody who's written a series. Um, yeah. So, but but there there's a nice series. There's somebody who's written a lot of um, like five page documents about many countries about the whole history of it. But eventually you find it. So it's googling, and and so you know you, you have to make some assumptions. Well, given that this is Norway, what did they really use on their maps in those years? And that's probably what it is, right? Things like that. So so it's it, it's really context specific, um, and that's what what. what Roger was talking about yesterday with Brazil, like, well, okay, we know it's Brazil, and it's probably this one. Uh, if you have ArcGIS or QGIS where they have all these lists, it's often one way to start, oh, it's probably this one, this one, because of their list. And, um, I was thinking that there, there might be some, some repository that we could use in R actually to, to contrast. The other thing would be here, you would say, yeah, no, that's not, not, not in R, <laughs> but, but not, not really. But here I would say Norway. I say, oh, that's interesting. So we have the, the, you have the NGO. 1948. So apparently, in 1948, um, they came up with this, and then rather than a datum, they're just using an ellipsoid with these parameters, um, and it's it's a Mercator type projection, but with some of their own parameters. So apparently, that's sort of what the Norwegians have used a lot. And so, if you'd get some Norwegian data, I had no idea. That's what I would try. I would assign that, project it to that long. Put it in Google, Google Earth or so to see if it, if it, if these borders match, and if they do, then oh great, I found it. If they don't match, then try something else. But what? It's it's endless. I mean, I've, I have thought of you know you, you could in principle make a make a program that would optimize that, but would try them all, would would compare with sort of you had some control points and you could figure out which one it has to which one it might be. But it, but the search space is huge. 
but in principle, you could, could make that. Um, in the end, if I really cannot find it, then you always have the rubber sheet transform, where you actually just you know, start drawing these control points. You can't do that in R, but where you, um, um, you know, if, if, if you have, um, you know, some kind of a coastline, and then you have your other data, um, where did I change it over here? Um, you know, for the same coastline, you can say, well, you know, this is that point. Um, well, it's hard to know over here. You know, this is probably there. <laughs> it's not quite the same. And you can, you can, if and then you can pull it there. ArcGIS is really good in that. Actually, it's really, really nice tools to basically rubber sheet it towards where it should be. And that's I've done it a lot with this GADAM data set I showed yesterday. These boundaries very often have boundaries. I don't quite very well. Basically, I get them from Wikipedia, where I only have the boundaries. And then I start guessing. Well, okay, is Romania probably used this, and then often it doesn't. And um, and actually, I don't have a coordinate system anyway. So the first, so either way, I have to do a lot of. But I, I take a map I have, I put it in the coordinate system. I think that map that I could took from Wikipedia is. Then I put them together and I do do this adjustment. So that that's the last resort. But um, um, then it's at least somewhat close, and probably close enough for many uses. Okay. I was thinking of, of distribution modeling of several species. Yeah. No, you, you really have no idea because, because they, this, so much has happened already, and and and, it, and and often the data from different times so they have used GPSs and who knows with what setting. Uh, other ones are older; have, they may have used paper maps, or they, but they may also have just georeferenced very recently with Google. I mean, you have no idea. <laughs> so, so yeah, theoretically great, but it, it's um, I, w I would. And there's huge uncertainty anyway. I mean, there's a lot of mistakes because they will just say, well, this was collected in Bergen. And you can worry about the datum, but really Bergen is much larger than your datum error anyway. So, I, I yeah. If, 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 if there were places where you're going to dig for gold or so, I could imagine that you'd really want to be sure, right? Because you want to build a big mine and it turns out it was a mile. <laughs> Off, it's a, it's a it's a big problem. But if you're doing species modeling and you have 100 records and there's a little noise in that, it's not very sensitive to it. Particularly if you use climate data, because climate is very smooth, right? Um, if you have predictors that are more noisy or more more variable, it's sure distances maybe it would matter more. All right. Do we have coffee breaks? Uh, and if so, is this a good time? Perfect time, I hear. So let's. Uh, so this is a perfect time for coffee break. But you're, of course, f feel free to uh, work on your own schedule, and uh, I'll come walk around again, um, answer your questions, and then after that, we'll uh, we'll talk a bit about data.